Wiggins. Basically, I'm a nervous person. People call me Arnold because I don't have a nickname. So I tell them that Arnold is my nickname. So I can pretend that they are my close personal friends who know me by my nickname, T Arnold. I live here at the Stonehenge Villa apartment complex with three other guys in a group apartment. Did I mention I was a nervous person? Well, frankly, I am. Today I went to the market to get some Wheaties, but I couldn't remember if I wanted one box or more boxes. So I asked the manager how many boxes should I get? For just you, he said. Yes, sir, I said. 17, he said. But, and this is why I wanted to emphasize nervous, I could only find nine boxes of Wheaties. So what could I do? I got nine boxes of Wheaties. Seven heads of lettuce. And that made 16 and a bag of charcoal briquettes. That made 17. But the more I thought about it, the more I didn't get enough what? Was it A, Wheaties, B, lettuce, or C, charcoal briquettes? This concerned me, so I asked the girl in line what she thought. I don't remember what she said, but it was pretty thorough. Do you think I did the right thing? Listen. <laughs> Just some stuff I got from the market. We were running a little low. I got to see it. It's a library card. It's nice. It says my name. Lucian P. Smith. <laughs> I see it right there. It'd be green. <laughs> it's nice. Lucian P. Smith. You know, libraries have that funny smell. It smells like books. Books! That's it. They, they smell like books. Funnies like lettuce. Yes, they constantly do. Do you have a bunny? You got a bunny head? No, really, Lucian, this concerns me. I mean, we're friends and all, but you never met, made mention of a bunny. It says my name, Lucian P. Smith. Oh, you read them? Yes, but I emphasize I have not forgotten about the bunny. Lucian P. Smith loves hard books. They be hard. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1950. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1955. It'd be a set. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1952. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1944. Hard, hard, hard. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1947. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1948. Department of Agriculture Yearbook 1951. Pretty good. Now, where's that bunny head? Do you have a bunny? Not really, Lucian. This is really starting to bother me. I'd be reading good now. A, B, C, D, L, M, N, O, Q. No, Lucian, this has to be emphasized. I have A, Wheaties, a, B, Lettuce, B, and C, Charcoal Briquettes. And, and a quart of milk for the Wheaties. Did I mention the Wheaties? I think I forgot the Wheaties. Okay, so let's say the Wheaties are deep. You follow me, right? The Wheaties are deep. Uh, okay. So I have A lettuce, a. B charcoal briquettes, B. C Wheaties, and D Wheaties? Something's not right here. It's a hard song. The door! It must be the door! What about them? You get in trouble. Jack be mad. I know, I know. I don't know. I don't know. I got this. I know. I got it. <laughs> we'll put it all in the tub. 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 I better get the door first. Get the door. Get the door. Get the I door. Get the door, and then we'll put it in the tub, okay? Get the door. Get the door. Get the oh, door. Oh, Lucian, okay? I'd just be standing. <laughs> this is just perfect. Hi, Jack. It's nice to see you today, Jack. It's a nice day today. Not too many clouds in the sky today, huh, Jack? Not too many bunnies in the sky today. You're right, Lucian. I drove all the way over here, not one bunny. What are you guys up to? <laughs> you know, just hanging around. Hanging around. That's a good thing to do on a Saturday. Saturday's a good hang around day. What's that up your shirt, Lucian? 
My shirt? Yeah, there's something up your shirt. I, at least I hope there's something up uh, He had a big breakfast! My breakfast should be big. <laughs> you know, French toast, cereal, bacon, eggs, waffles, pancakes, bacon. Did I say bacon? And bacon too. Eggs, waffles, bacon, omelets, bacon. In the tub! In no, the tub! No, in the tub! No, in the tub! Yes! <laughs> Oh boy! That bus sure crowded. I have to sit in front of the old people. You get a real good luck at the one if you sit with the old people. One of the old people said, How's your day today? Oh boy, I hate those questions. Who's Wheaties? You just had to mention it, didn't you? You just couldn't ignore them, could you? You just couldn't ignore them. I'm sorry, Honor. Honest, I'm sorry. You worry me, Norman. Honestly, you cause me serious concern. Hi, Norman. Oh, Jack. Hi, Jack. How are you? Job's going great. Nice to see you. Oh, oh well, I'm real sleepy. I'd better get to bed. That bus, oh boy, was it ever crowded. I have to sit up front with the old people. Norman. These late hours, oh boy, did they ever get a man tired. It's early afternoon, Norman. It is? What's that, up your shirt, Norman? Up my shirt? Up your shirt? This is beginning to become an epidemic. <laughs> oh boy, there's something up my shirt? I didn't even notice. What could it be? The suspense is killing us. <clears throat> Donuts! Oh boy, donuts, I didn't even notice. Donuts. Ooh, I got charcoal briquettes. I don't believe this. I mean, you make a plan, you work it all out. I'll tell you what, I really don't believe this. I mean, it was foolproof. My name is Jack Palmer. And for the past eight months, I've been supervising five group apartments for the mentally handicapped. That's 17 adult men. See, the idea is to introduce them to the mainstream. Most of the times, I laugh at their escapades, but sometimes the laughter wears thin. The truth is, they're, they're burning me out. But despite all of this, they seem to be my closest associates. At the donut shop where Norman works, his nickname is Billy Bulimia. This is because at the end of each shift, the workers give the broken donuts to Norman. This is, out, this is out, an act of kindness towards Norman and the workers. During the past three months that Norman's been working there, he's gained 17 pounds. And Lucian, who on a recent group trip to a local petting zoo, stunned multiple school children and toddlers by jumping on top of an apathetic cow and yelling, Fire! This cow be on fire! Arnold bought a weather radio after the four days of nothing but weather. Also, Arnold bought a also Arnold informed the Coast Guard and informed them that it, that there was a plot to suppress all music, news, and commercials. And Barry, who, who you have not yet met, has convinced himself that he is a golf pro. He's even put up signs in the recreation room of our apartment to advertise private lessons. I think he's gotten about four people to sign up. So my next question now is, who's on first? Let me tell you one of the basic problems of golf. Maybe the basic problem of golf. Golf is a game. Just a game, Mr. Hines. Just a game. Well, there's no time to worry about that. Besides, I'm on more than two or three courses with a serious hedge. Hazard, sure. Trap, sure. Thick, rough, sure. But hedges? That's rare. My name is Hedges. My name is John Hedges. I have no reason to doubt that. But you're paying good money for this lesson. And we can't spend all the time learning about the occasional hedge. It just doesn't make sense. Are you joking? I don't joke, John. Besides, for this lesson, you won't be using your golf club. Please put your golf club down. I'm just holding it. Please. You're right. Thank you. And for this lesson, today's lesson, I will teach you how to handle a heckler in the gallery. Gallery? What gallery? Why you know I'm down in my and I just want to be best sitters. The pros always have a crowd. Always a gallery. Inspired, Mr. Hodges. Inspired to be a champion. Hedges. Golf is more than hedges, Hodges. Golf is the little things, the basics. 
Execution, execution, execution. All right, fine. I just want a few basic tips. Just show me one basic tip. Which one's a tip? Some, a basic tip, now something that will help you right now. Am I right? This is where I want. Fine, let me think. I think we should just forget about this. This doesn't seem to be working. Don't quit now, John. I know the process is going to be difficult, but it'll be easier as we go on. There'll be a lot less to memorize. Okay. At the top of your back screen, come to a complete parallel. Arms parallel to the ground. Then take a moment to reflect how blessed you are sleeping time where golf is a cool flower. Now swing that little round circle as efficiently as you can. I'm going to be looking at my books. They'd be hard. I'd be doing them alone. Looks like some pretty serious reading there, Lucian. It's agriculture. Hard, hard, hard. At the donut shop, I saw this one book in the men's room. Oh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> you have to study agriculture in a set, year by year. Otherwise, it won't make any sense. It'd be a set. There were girls in there. Oh, boy, I mean nothing. I mean nothing. Nothing? You mean nothing? There was one girl in the snow. She had nothing on. In the snow? With nothing on? In the snow with nothing on? Yes, Arnold, she was in the snow with nothing on. Now, do you think maybe we could zoom back to the problem with these Wheaties? She had a hat. Where's the Wheaties? <laughs> Jackie's been doing this all day, about a million times, and he won't give out any information. I'll catch Angina if he keeps it up. She had those big shoes like pants. See? It is true. There was a girl in the snow with nothing on but big shoes and a hat, and I'm the last to know about it. Arnold, I want you to take all of this stuff back to the store. Take it all back where? To the store. I told you to stop buying things from Livingston's markets. I told you they take advantage of you. I told you they tease you. I've, I've done the whole bit, but nothing works, so we're going to try yet another approach. I don't know, Jack. This is pretty nerve-wracking. Listen, I want you to take the Wheaties and the lettuce and the milk and the charcoal in the charcoal and put them back in the bags. And put the bags back in the shopping cart and take it all back. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I know it's hard, but you can do it. Norman, if you take one bite of that, that donut, I'm going to turn your keys into a lawn statue. Need my keys. They're important. It's your decision, Norman. Your keys are your donuts. Take your time. Am I right while I'm thinking it over? <laughs> it's a good idea, Jack. I'm going to put it right down on my list of things to do. Stop right there. No, Norman, you don't get to eat while you're thinking over it. Arnold, you're going to do it now. Now? Yes, now. I'll even help you with the bags. Come on. It's hard. If you take one bite of that, out of that donut, Norman, your keys are ancient history. I can't do it. I don't know the manager's name. There, that's final. Put the donuts down. <laughs> Listen, Arnold, just put the Wheaties away. Do you know what? Fine! I'll put the Wheaties away. But you know what? In my entire life, I have never seen such pressure. Boy, a guy can't even eat a donut or get a few things for a rainy day. Oh, boy! He's mad. <laughs> I'll just put these in the refrigerator. For a snack, right? Yeah, I know. For later. What about that girl you like? The one that always goes to the Wednesday night dances? Who do you think she'd think? What oh, girl? You know what girl? Sheila. Oh, Sheila. She's nice. I like her. Didn't she say you were too fat? And didn't you say you were going to stop eating all these donuts? Come on now. Maybe I'll just move to Russia. I repeat, to Russia. Maybe I'll just pack up all of my things and move to Russia. You know what? I think I will. I'm going to pack up all of my things and move to Russia tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you mad? <laughs>
<laughs> she doesn't like fast dances. She likes slow dances. You know what she did? What? In the middle of a really fast dance, she just stopped. Like the bus stop? Oh boy, I thought she was broken or something. That kind of thing happens all the time. I know. That's what I figured. Who can keep up with it? My mind is made up. <laughs> I'm moving to Russia tomorrow. Thank you very much and have a nice day. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> Jack, you take it. I'm proud of you, Lauren. She's not so skinny in it herself. <laughs> Jack, can she look come over sometime? Um, sure, Norman. We'll have Harry and the band pick her up someday. Just me and her alone? Oh, I, I don't know, Norman. Alone is kind of against the rules. She's not so skinny in it herself. Look, I love her. And pretty soon we're going to get married. We're going to have one baby boy and one baby girl. And we're going to take that baby boy and baby girl everywhere we go. That's the law we made. Every place. Even if Sheila and I have to go to the army or something. If Norman goes to the army, and Arnold moves to Russia, and Barry goes on that pro tour, and Lucian gives his like a life to agriculture, I have a lot more free time. <laughs> Lucian and Norman are retarded. Arnold is marginal, depressive by trade. He will fool you sometimes, but his face ha his deck has no face cards. Barry, on the other hand, really doesn't even belong here in the first place. He's a grade A schizophrenic with a chronic history of institutions. Looney, tethering on the edge but clearly resourceful. Barry tells all his problems to the death widow, Miss Freemus. She lives three doors down. He, she knits, he talks. I call it Madame Defarge in the golf run. Hey, Hodges quick. Looks like he's just set with edges. He kept thinking at me, hedges, hedges, hedges. Now I'm only down to two students. At a one, I commuted at one dollar and thirty cents for a whole week of instruction. I only get ninety dollars and forty-eight cents. I commuted, and that's with four expenses. I still have to buy gloves yet. You don't need gloves in the summer, Mary. Gloves. I said gloves. Guys, guys in here, I got him. He be trapped. Where are you? Guys, he be trapped in the toilet. He be trapped. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Not the rat can see. I thought it would help. Don't you understand? It's a behavior pattern. Rats can't see in the dark. He be trapped. The door is open. The rat be trapped. Shut the door. No. No, wait. We need a plan. We need an airtight plan. Rats are sneaky. That's why everybody says, you sneaky rat. <laughs> we can't waste any time. First thing that we do, we'll blind you. I'll shut off the lights. There. Now, Lucian, count to three. Very easy. Don't let him know where you are. I mean home. I know where you are, but don't let the rat know where you are. Tell him you're not home. I not be home. Shut the door. There he is. Oh, I oh, 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 the oh, door. Oh, 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 I got him. I see him. Oh, 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 Germs. That's insane. <laughs> I 
I know. We're flushing down the toilet. Rats, they swim. Okay, we'll turn off the lights and then we'll flush it down the toilet. Okay, now Norman, grab him by the tail. By the tail? By the tail! He's small. Maybe he'd be sleeping. You got him? You got him? He don't wait much. Go on, take him, take him. <laughs> hey, we'll turn off the lights. We caught our rat. Hi, Barry. I got the rat. I can't see you. We're going to flush him down. Turn him off, turn him off. This is my house too. I don't spend till, I don't tend to spend all the time in the dark. Norman, hurry, flush him! We did it! He went there just like toilet paper. Yeah. I'll get the lights. Oh, Lucian P. Smith be tired. It just sucked him right down. <laughs> that was one of the bravest things I've ever done. Hi, Barry. It's a nice day today. The cross kid quit today. He said, I'm only nine years old, the cross kid said. I said, so what? I'm 27. Now I'm only down to one student. It was a great lesson, too. I called it the do's and don'ts of renting a golf course. I had pictures of everything. It really irks me. All people ever want to do is golf. Sometimes I lunch down here by the railroad tracks. It's romantic in a soda kind of way. I ran into my ex wife the other day. She's full of ex whatever gun. She asked me a few polite questions about my job. Then she asked me, what happens if they won't need you anymore? They'll never not need me, I said. Who made that rule, she asked. God, I said. Three months ago, Lucian was informed by the state senate community, no, the Social Security Administration, that his, that his benefits were being cut off. They said that their information stated that he was fully capable of being integrated into the community. We appeal hello. Our next step is to appear before a state senate committee subcommittee. Lucian has been invited as a guest. I try to prepare him, but I don't think he's taking it. He says if he knows the alphabet song, it'll be okay. He also says he wants to wear a tie with Spider-Man on it, just so they know how serious this is. As a final note, my ex-wife looked terrific. She drives a BMW now and wears a lot of bright green. Who's that funny little man in the back of your car, she asked. It was Arnold. That's Arnold, I said. Why is he wearing, why is he reading the phone book sideways, she asked. He's trying to find a roadmap to Russia, I said. How do you stand, she asked. And Arnold, still in the backseat of my car, said, if the phone people want to hide the map to Russia, fine. But don't turn around and call it a phone book. Don't deceive the public. <laughs> When I went back to Livingston's Market to get my money back from the manager, he called me a fucking nut. So I called him a banana republic. <laughs> Boy, did I get even or what? Yeah, I could go. Yeah, I killed the rat. Killing rats and golfing are two in sports, Lucian. Oh, funnies, can I see them? There are no funnies in this paper. This is the Wall Street Journal. How come? This is a businessman paper. There's no room for businessman paper for funnies. Oh, you be a business now, huh, Barry? Yep, I'm getting to the ring of beaver. I'm looking into it. You better get dressed. If Harry comes by with the van and she's not ready, he'll be pissed. I can golf. Everybody thinks they can golf, Lucian. That's why there are golf courses. The funnies, can I see them? There are no funnies in this paper. This is the Wall Street Journal. Can I see them then? See what? Snoopy. <laughs> there is no Snoopy. There is no funnies. This is the Wall Street Journal. I'm being dressed. And if I do wear the beaver, I'm the only one allowed to touch them. Beavers aren't toys, Lucian. They're tools of industry. Let us tell you, Mr. 
women, it's a night there today. She said, I never drink iced tea. Oh boy, did that throw me? What do you think she meant? She's a very intelligent woman, Norman. Sometimes I don't get her just at first, but it always seems to click in. You got mail, a golf book, and a letter. A letter? Snoopy, he goes. Go get dressed. Me neither. Let me get dressed. Who's it from? Can I have the stamp when you're done? <laughs> Is it a golf letter? It's from my mom. Mom's coming to visit me. It's from my mom. Are you done with the stamp? Mom's coming to Boston for a day. She's coming to visit me. It's from my mom. She's here. Oh, voice is fast. It's from my mom. Mom's coming to visit me. I'll tell your mom you're in the restroom. Hello. Hello. My name is Norman Belansky. Welcome to my home. Want to take a seat? Oh, I really can't stay. My name is Karen Ward. My husband and I moved in next door about a week ago. Hello. My name is Norman Belaski. Welcome to my seat. Want to take it home? <laughs> a seat. Want to take my home? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is kind of, you know, tricky. Welcome to my home. Want to take a seat? I think that's what you meant. No, it can't be that. This is my home, not your home. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't stay. Want to take a seat? Oh, sure. Oh, hello, my name is Brady Pepper. Welcome to my home. Why don't you take a seat? I'm sitting, thank you. How silly of me. Do you enjoy golf? Can I get you some something to drink? We have eggs and cheese and milk and butter and iced tea. I really have to go. I just came back for a second to ask. You know, my mom's coming to visit me. She's going to be a boss for you today. She's coming down to visit me. That's nice. Can I get some iced tea, please? No, thank you. You know what my mom used to do? She used to be the backfield coach for the, for the New, York, New York Yankees with my dad. Kendra Kelly's what they call them. Stinkies, I can get into anything. That's nice, but I really can't stay. Listen, my little boy, Sean, has two red hamsters. And one of them escaped last night. And we thought maybe one of them might have escaped. <laughs> oh. A hamster? Is that in the rat or rabbit family? Was he big or little? I don't know, maybe about this big? About the size of two and a half, three golf balls? Mm -hmm. Brown or some other color? <laughs> brown. He was light brown and about four inches. <laughs> nope. I haven't seen hotter hair of a hamster. What about you, Norman? Hello. My name is Norman Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> because we clean up after the matinee, mostly I just see the ends of movies, or sometimes the start. But I always seem to miss the story. It's not a bad job, though. My boss, Mr. Corbin, says I'm doing a really great job. But frankly, I'm a little worried. On Tuesday, this new usher came in. His name is Melvin. And believe me, he looks like a typical Melvin. Big muscles and a thick, thick neck. Melvin's got me a little concerned. He says if I don't polish his shoes, he'll beat me up. And if I tell anybody, he'll grind me into the pavement. Melvin wears these. <laughs> they're just black. I'm really glad they're not two-toned or something. Come on, Lucian, Norman, and Arnold are already in the car. Aren't you coming? I don't want to be dancing. Uh, come on, you always love it when you get there. Uh, I just showered. It, your hair's not wet. I just did my hands and my knees and my feet. <laughs> You're supposed to do your whole body, not just selected parts. It's too wet in there. Right, look, just throw on some dancing clothes and we'll drive over to the center. I've been practicing for the state Schneck. The state center? Uh, I got this tie. It has Spider-Man. I'd be showing them my library card, too. Great idea. Look, look, just throw on some dancing clothes and come to the dance with Norman and Arnold and me. No, thank you. I'd be practicing for the state Schneck. Okay, I understand. Barry, he be helping me practice. State Schneck. They read? Yeah, they read. Oh, but they don't care if you can read or not. They just want you to be yourself. Just answer a few questions and be yourself. 
Yourself ain't ready yet. Okay. Yourself just ain't ready. Two nights ago, at around midnight, Lucian pulled the fire alarm. And this caused a flurry of activity. Fires in apartment complexes tend to cause a lot of attention, lots of stress, and one particularly enraged fire chief. When he caught up to Lucian, Lucian asked, can I be having some aspirin, please? But when he caught up to me, he was not in the listening mood. When I got home at around 3 in the morning, I threw a toaster around the kitchen. Metal shots flying everywhere. A friend of mine came over the next day. What happened here, he asked. I'm on a toaster free diet, I said. <laughs> and we both laughed. <laughs> And you know what she did? She drooled on me, all over my shoulder. So it even got on my pants. I hate that, you know, when you dance with a girl and she drools all over you. And that Freddy Gonzalo, ever since he got the new sneakers with the stripes, he thinks he's Xavier Cougar or somebody. <laughs> Who's Xavier Cougar? <laughs> Only the greatest dancer to ever live, that's all. Oh, why are your hands on that? They are? Oh, uh, I've been polishing my shoes lately. It's a habit I'm into. They look scuffed. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't keep them perfect every minute of the day. That would be an impossibility. There's bound to be scuffs plenty of times. I like scuffs. Her, her name is Helen. She has this wicked tick, like that. Like this? Kind of, but it's more of a... Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Norman, a tick like that concerns me. I know. Who can keep up with it? She can't help it. It's a behavior pattern. Kind of like a big nose or ears that stick out all over the place. I've seen ears like those. But frankly, I've been watching her all night, and she hasn't ticked once. Maybe it was just me? Maybe it was a plan to make me think she had a tick? It's kind of like that, huh? <laughs> More that way. <laughs> That's a pretty bad tick. I'm going to cut in. I'm going to say, excuse me, may I cut in? Jack says we can cut in if we want to. Go ahead, cut in. Excuse me, may I cut in? That's all I'm going to say. Go ahead. I'll be right back after this dance is over. Did you cut in? Does she have a tick or not? <laughs> I figured I'd better wait for a while. You know, I gave it some serious consideration and I didn't even feel like dancing anyway. Especially with some stupid girl named Kelly who has a tick. That made me better. Sure it's better. Just because some stupid girl named Helen has a tick, she thinks she's the queen of England all of a sudden. And you know what? What? She's not. That may be better. Sure it's better. That may be better. Sure it's better. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. My arthritis is too active. But I brought this club just for this lesson. I'm sorry, Barry. I just can't. Did I tell you my boss coming to visit me? She's going to get boss for this. She's coming down to visit me. That would be nice. I have the orange rocker in my bedroom. We could sit here. It sure is a pretty mood tonight. Too bad she couldn't have came tonight. When we first moved here, Barney said he loved this view more than anything. The way the guard towers stick up over the trees, he loved that. But Barney's sister said she'd never live anywhere near a prison. But Barney said he'd much prefer to know where the criminal element was. You know what my mom used to do with my dad? She used to be the back coach for the New York Yankees. Kipper Kelly's what they called them. Add pink lemonade in the freezer. We can sit out here and have some lemonade. I haven't seen her in nine years. A lot happens in five years, Barry. You know, she's been busy on the road, but every Christmas, no matter what, she brings me a box of chocolates. She had a few times to arrive late, but she never forgets. It's not my mom. <laughs> I want to go to the restroom. 
and a couple of drip garments in pants. And he doesn't want people to think it's pee. So he won't come out. So what, I said. But he just won't come out. Yeah, I've had that kind of thing happen to me too. It's pretty embarrassing. Except for that, it's, it's been kind of slow. I see you and Chilo aren't dancing. What's the matter? She got some skin in there herself. <laughs> Did you two have a fight? Jack, I need my keys. She doesn't like your keys, huh? She wants my keys. Well, um, she looks pretty sad over there. Maybe you should try dancing with her. It'll be the real mature thing to do. But Jack, she wants my keys. She don't even mention the keys. She's probably already forgotten about them. Are you kidding me? She's got a memory like a horse. Look, I have an idea. You give the keys to me, and I'll keep them for the meantime. You can ask her to dance, and if she asks you about them, you can tell her, you can tell her that I have them. No. Oh boy, I got it. What? I'll just ask her to dance. I'll just ask her. It was a pleasure to meet you, Jack. I gotta go. <laughs> Every Wednesday night, we have dances here at the center. Most of the residents come, they sit down and eat, drink fruit punch and eat potato chips, pop balloons, sit on the fringe and then sooner or later dance. Most of the multiple handicapped just sit and watch. It's a really curious thing. I've been coming to these dances for months now and I can never tell if it's the saddest place I've ever been to. The happiest. Jack, who oh boy am I glad to see you. <laughs> I don't know, have you been swimming? <laughs> no, nope. the faucet is floating all over me. Water all over the place. Great. Stop. I'll be right back, Mark. Don't you get it? Get what? This is perfect, just perfect. Okay, Arnold, what is going on? Okay, so here's what happened. I was in the restroom and I was peeing and I was as careful as usual, but a couple of drops got on my pants and I got in the stall and I waited for it to dry. But get this, it wouldn't dry. It must have been a special element or something. So I got out of the stall and I splashed water on myself so I could tell people that the faucet exploded all over me. I had great results. <laughs> Ladies and men of the stage net, Lucian P. Smith has Spider-Man. I mean business. A, B, C, D, L, M, N, O, Q. I'll send the stream assist. And in my opinion, she doesn't have the temperament for the pro tour. Under all that pressure, she crumbles. It really is a shame. She is a nice lady. What are you doing, Lucian? I be planting. Tomatoes don't grow like that. They grow off little bushes. We got no bushes. Is that golf? This is Plagmire, most useful club in the bag. Some men, they see with their Plagmire. That must be bumpy. <laughs> bumpy or not, it makes for better golf, more serious golf. That's see my mom's coming down to visit me. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a boss for a few days. She's coming down to visit me. That must be bumpy to sleep with. You know, my mom once played one-on-one -on -one with Bob Cousy and ate him up, just ate him up. She ate him up? Yeah, a few driving shots there, a few curving shots there. Defense, defense, defense! She ate him up? Lucian, can I see you, tell you something? Power to power, buddy to buddy? A secret? Ooh, Norman, he be eating donuts a lot. My mom scares me, Lucian. She scares me something terrible will happen, just terrible. You want a cookie? We got cookies. Norman don't be eating cookies like he be eating donuts. <laughs> no, I think I'll just get ready for bed. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get ready for bed. Um, Moms, they be scary sometimes. Ladies and men of the stage neck, I am Lucian P. Smith. Me and Barry be golfing. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. Hi, 
Hi, Sheila. <laughs> Hi, Norman. Hello. My name is Norman Bolesky. May I hold this dance? Hi, Norman. Oh boy, that show was nice. <laughs> the popcorn was good tonight. I didn't have it. It was good popcorn in a bowl. It's nice in a bowl. I'm on a diet. I only have two scoops. That's all. I saw this donut today, Norman, at the center. You saw a donut at the center? Oh boy. It made me think of you. Mr. Pro, he ate it up. I bet it was good. Your shirt's nice. It's my donut shop shirt. Jack said I can only wear it once in a while because it's a baby. Your tie is nice. Barry let me have it. He has lots of ties, so he, he let me have it. Want to dance? dance? <laughs> oh boy. Sure is nice. It's got a beat. I wouldn't go to no dance if it didn't have popcorn. My sister says to dance real good. You gotta make believe you're a flower. I have an African violet at the sink. <laughs> and you know what flower I think? Oh boy, let me guess. An African violet? I don't know, but I'd be sometime. I went up to Helen. She wasn't dancing, she was just standing there. And I said, excuse me, may I cut in? And you wanna know what she said? You're all wet! And this really did it. Oh yeah, I said, well you have a tip! Oh. Hi, and this is the nub. When we started dancing, she didn't tick at all. So what I wanna know is what she's up to. Arnold. Hi, Jack. I pulled three more people today. Let's go outside, Arnold. Okay, Jack, but I could catch a draft, and I repeat, have to take antibiotics. <laughs> Arnold, what did you tell Helen? <laughs> Nothing. What did you tell her? I told her she had a tick. <laughs> Goodness, Arnold, you cannot go around insulting people like that. Now she's in the van and she won't come out or talk to anybody. She started it, Jack. She said, and I mean this frankly, that you're all wet. You are all wet. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, you have a tick. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and don't swear, Jack. It's not polite. Do not tell me what to do, goddammit. Don't tell me what to do. I've had it with all of you. I've had it with the whole goddamn bunch. You tell me what to do. You have behavior patterns that are not fun, Jack. That are not, I repeat, one bit fun. Every time I lose my temper with the guys, I, I hate myself for about a week. I need a new job. They deserve better. I deserve better. Somebody deserves something. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three. That was nice. Boy. Oh boy, it sure was nice. Norman? Yeah? Can I have your keys? <laughs> <laughs> I need my keys. Please, Norman. I need my keys, Sheila. I can't get things without my keys. Can I have them? I need my keys, Sheila. I can't get the things without my keys. I like the slow parts. Me too. It's got to be.
ladies and men of the stage neck. This be high. <laughs> ladies and men of the stage neck. Lucian P. Smith has Spider-Man. I mean business. This be high. Hi. Hi, everybody being everywhere. Hi. Lucian P. Smith says hi. Have a nice day. Hi. He says he has a wedding to go to. He says if I don't polish them, he'll grind me into pulp. And that really did it. Oh, yeah? I said, what's pulp? <laughs> I ran into my movie manager, Mr. Corbin, the other day. He's a really nice guy, but I mean this frankly. The bathrooms aren't all too important to him. I asked him to take a look at the number three urinal. It seemed to be going down pretty slow. And you know what he said? Arnold, that's your problem. I couldn't believe it. What does he think I am, an architect? <laughs> It's hard. You gotta plug in a plug, Lucian. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> if you don't turn it on, it won't pick up nothing. I forgot. I saw Sheila at the center in there. Oh boy. She's nice. When I vacuum, it'd be loud. One day, we're gonna have one baby boy and one baby girl. <laughs> Every day we're going to bring that baby boy and baby girl to the donut shop. And you know what? <laughs> Free donuts. Norman, where do dust come from? From trees. Oh. Mm -hmm. And when that baby boy and that baby girl get real big, we'll give them cruise. Free. We got no trees. Come in. My name is Norman Pulaski. Welcome to my home. <laughs> we got no trees. Good morning, guys. What's happening? Hi, Jack. How are you? Just look great. Nice to see you. What happened to your finger? Oh, I just cut it in the car. You want to lie down? Uh, it's nothing, Norman. It's just a scrape. What are you doing, Lucian? I'd be fixing it better. Thanks, Lucian. It feels better already. <laughs> He's got dust all on him. Kiss his hand, Norman. It'll just stop the bleeding. I'll be back. I'll clean it in a second. We got no trees. So, where are the other two musketeers? Arnold outside being the rugs, but Barry, he says he won't help. He's too busy. Arnold's out beating what rugs? The rugs. Oh, those rugs. Just tell me, and I'd be taking you to the hospital. I, I, I didn't cut that one, I cut the other one. Barry's right down on the list of the ambassador. So since his mom come to visit, he won't help. Uh, I'll talk to him, Norman. He, he's under a lot of pressure right now, a lot of strain. Mm -hmm. They're good. I'm just going to go to the restroom and put a Band-Aid on. He says because his mom come to visit, he has to get ready. So he won't clean them. If my mom come to visit, I still do dishes. <laughs> My mommy, she be dead. Ooh. My mom too. Did you do the dishes? No, thank you. I'm dusty. Where's Jack? I saw his car outside. In the bathroom? God, this can't wait. This is urgent. <coughs> Excuse me, Jack. We need to have a conversation. I'll be right out, Arnold. Hold your horses. Hold my horses? You got horses? <laughs> you must not be talking about me. I don't have any horses. It's me, Arnold. We got no trees. <laughs> okay, Arnold, what is the big emergency? Hi, Jack. It's nice to see you today. A pleasure to see you, too. What's the emergency? I ran into a little problem with the rugs. Of course. I ran into a huge problem with the rugs, in fact. What rugs? These rugs. You got horses, Arnold? And Jack, he's doing it again. First it was bunnies, and now it's horses. It's a behavior pattern. Lucian, please stop talking about bunnies. You've got to make it legal to have them in there. I scrub, I scrub, I scrub, and it won't come out. Where's the bunny? 
Jack. Jack is doing it again. I do not, I repeat, have a bunny. I do not, I repeat, have a bunny. I do not, I repeat, have a bunny. Arnold, can we just drift our way back to the rug? She's got me so worried about this bunny, I can hardly think. And eggs. No more eggs. And stick. If we can't have any eggs, I'll go on a hunger strike. Hi, Barry. Lucian, Jack. Barry? Arnold? Norman? I don't want to pick down the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if anybody's there or what. <laughs> well, if you will excuse me, I have business to take care of. Miss Freemus let me use her crayons. Her husband was in the roofing tile game. Just because he golfs, he thinks he's Xavier Cougar or somebody. So, Arnold, last time we tuned in on Flood and Xenon, there was something about rugs? The rugs! I almost forgot about the rugs! Thanks for reminding me, this is really important. And eggs. I'm sick of eggs. Eggs stick! Does anybody care about the rugs or what? Eggs, they come out of chickens. Does anybody care about the rugs? Or is it just me? Because if it's just me, I'm not telling. Take it or leave it. Sometimes the suds get so big, you can't see nothing. Ooh, let me see. It's weird, huh? You can't see nothing. Nobody cares about the rugs? Fine. I'm going to my room to think about the rugs. And if somebody, for example, wants to know what happens with the rugs, then they'll have to get me to tell them. But guess what? I'm not telling. Oh boy, Lucian. Oh boy. When I move to Russia, <laughs> if they give me a roommate who says, oh boy, all the time, I, as an American citizen, say, yes to that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy, what's yes? Yes. What's yes? I think I'll be needing these. Call it a behavior pattern if you want, but that's the way I see it. Fat? Oh, boy, did you just say fat? Fellas. Look who's calling who fat. Fat people 
people who came and we get the Reese's ball out of the cup. Fat people need candies wherever they go. What fat people go fat? That is enough. I decided I'm going to be fair about this. I've given it some serious consideration and I decided I'm going to be fair. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go outside to where this entire rug thing started. And anybody who's willing to listen can either A, take it, or B, leave it. Frankly, in Russia, rugs are more important than golf. <laughs> Arnold took the weather mat. Jeff, Arnold took the weather mat. You bring it right back. I'm the one that comes to visit us. <laughs> no, I'm not. He's fast. <laughs> Norman, I've given it some thought, and you're the only guy I want to tell. Follow me. I've got to do the dishes. <laughs> Last time you did this, you threw us cheese all over the plates. <laughs> cheese? Oh boy, did you just say cheese? Are you coming or not? These rugs are giving me muscle cramps. Please get your eyesight checked. Fat? Oh boy, just call me fat. <laughs> you said you should get your eyesight checked. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm not wasting the best part of the day. I emphasize just staying here chit-chat. You need to sink I got when you do the dishes. Guys, why don't we just take a rest? Golf sucks! What? Golf sucks! I don't care if anybody hears me. Golf sucks, it sucks, it sucks! <laughs> Golf sucks. It doesn't suck, it sucks. If I had lots of money, I'd go to Florida now. Maybe play a few rounds every day, fly on the beach. Maybe I invite my mom. Yeah, I invite my mom. I haven't seen her in nine years. She's probably aged. That's just the aging process. Nine years is a long time. You know, when dad died, mom was super busy, so she dropped me out the institutions. And she kind of waved. I'll tell you what. Why don't we just go take a walk? No, I think I'll stay here, Jack. Yeah, I think I'll just stay here. Look, you sure? I've, I've golfed every once in a while. I'm not good at it, but I can use a pointer or two. You're just being nice, Jack. I'll tell you what. I'll go take a walk, and in 10 minutes or so, I'll come back. I'll go listen to Arnold talk about the rugs. <laughs> you go tell him I want those welcome mat back when my dad comes, my mom comes. You tell him that, okay? Sure, I'll be right back. I could use the time alone. Hey, Barry. I got this for golf. These are buttons, Lucian. It's all I could be finding. They be good for golf? Every Christmas, those chocolates came. But I think Mom just forgot this, but I've never really been a fan of chocolates. I used to get stomach aches from it. So every Christmas, I'd give it to the guys. You know, there was this one guy named Wally, whatever. He used to eat the chocolates to save the box. Then one day, he died. He just, he just died. And the nurse, they just threw the chocolates away. They threw the box away. They didn't even ask his family in the conclusion. I don't get that. They didn't even see what's inside. I don't, I don't get that, Lucian. Either you got it or you don't. And if you do, wait a while and it'll go away. About money. Lucian and Barry do community service at the sheltered workshop at the center. Pay is minimal, but since their expenses are already paid for, they somehow accumulate money. Norman, Arnold, and Norman make a lot do even better with their jobs. No, last week, Norman wanted a hair dryer. I said it was okay. He sold it to the person who could buy the most donuts. <laughs> he even sung a few bars on Happy Birthday. And about sex. The official policy is that sex between residents is to be discouraged. It leads to personal crisis and legal entanglements. The unofficial view. The unofficial view is more than one. 
most resident, most women are given are sterilized, but those who might be sexually active are given birth control pills. Pregnancy, for obvious reasons, is a disaster. But what amazes me is this: in a society where inexplicable lust is rampant and expected, why is it that sexual desires between the mentally deficient is viewed as an additional aberration? My last, my last job interview, my 14th in two months, ended with a pigeon-like woman saying that I was overqualified and overeducated. And over sex bad with a smile? She didn't smile back. Uncle Roman used to say, Uncle Roman also used to say this. The quickest way to a man's crotch is through a man's crotch. <laughs> yes, Uncle Roman was quite the lightweight. That's great. 
you know, I had a fight with Arnold about the rugs. All he would say was, loose lips, sink ships. <laughs> All he said. Where the hell is it? Is this it? Jack! Right in here. My bladder's about to pop wide open. <laughs> Goddamn apartments are built like zoos, built for goddamn rats. Wouldn't live in these sites for all the good tea in China. So, this is my berry. All grown up. Real good. Real good. Uh, real man. Say, where's the pisser in this stuff anyhow? Uh, right there. Catch this. <laughs> Just a little something. Nothing. Be right out. You do this, Barry? It's real nice. Welcome home now. Real fun. Give me a kiss yourself. Give me a kiss yourself. She got you a present? Huh? When she comes out, why don't you say hello? Sure, Jack. Sure. What's in the bag? I gotta wait for her to see me open it. That's just the proper way to do it. Sure. You know, some people have, don't have manners, but I do. That's why I teach golf etiquette. I'm sure. Golf etiquette. It's a birdie country. What a nice place you got here, Gary. A nice, homey feeling to it. It's me. I couldn't ever like to live this close to a prison. So, why don't you open it up? Barry. What's the deal here, Jack? Can he talk? He can talk. Hello, my name is Barry Clifton. Welcome to my home. Won't you take a seat? I'll stand. Those buses are built so close. It's a goddamn wonder I don't have a hernia. But thanks for the offer. Why don't you see what's in the back there? Oh, it's nothing. Just a little something. Nothing. A chocolate heart. That's... Great, Mrs. Clinton. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Like I said, just a thought. You can take the cellophane off if you want to. They just keep it on there and keep the chocolate fresh. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. My scheme was to get you a box, you know, like I usually do. One of the, a nice box of Fanny Farmer. But I was kind of out of time, so I had to get out the bus station. The bus station has a gift shop, you know. Gifts, cigarettes, gum. But they didn't have any chocolates. I asked them. All they had was this. I took one look at it, and I could tell that the goddamn thing was broken on the inside. So I told the lady, it's broken. She said, well, it's been here since Valentine's Day. The goddamn thing is damaged, I told her. She get sassy with me, I get sassy right back. You think because I'm an old woman, I can't get sassy? Well, Bullshit to that. So I told her, I'll give you half price for it. <laughs> Get this. The old soul says yes. Hey, Jack, can you get the boy loose enough if you give us a couple minutes long? Is that okay? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take a walk. Is that okay with you, Barry? Huh? I'll be right back, okay? Sure, Jack. Sure. Barry, a real nice set. Hurt your roomie with a retard. So, what you been doing with yourself? You know, when you were little, your father, God rest his pathetic soul, used to worry that you'd never talk. It wasn't until one day you were about three. You said your first word. You know what that word was? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> oh, it's about the funniest thing I ever heard. We took you right to your Auntie May's house so she could hear it too. And then you said it again. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Clear as a bell. I'm not for this. Bitch. Mm. Your father and I were real proud of you, Barry. Real proud. 
are we going to talk or are you going to keep it up with the silent crap? I'm talking to you, you son of a bitch. This is your goddamn mother. And when your goddamn mother talks, you better goddamn listen. You hear me, boy? This is your goddamn mother. Not some goddamn retard roommate. You hear me, boy? You goddamn nut! Oh. Mom, mom, don't hit me no more. Please, mom, please, mom. <laughs> hit me no more. I didn't mean to. It was, it was an accident. I, I lost control. Mom, mom, don't hit me no more. Please, mom, please. I lost control, you know. It was, ah, Jesus. Well, I guess I better go, you know. Those buses stay away on an old woman. That's one thing I learned in life, Barry. Those buses stay away with an old woman like me. And when Christmas goes around, you can bet those chops will be in the mail. You count on it. It ain't my way, Barry. When you were just a little, your father, God rest his pathetic soul. When you couldn't talk or do nothing, he loved you more than life itself. More than goddamn life itself. Mom? Mom? I'm a golf pro now, Mom? These are mountains. Personally, I would never wear cowboy boots. I am what you would call a land lover. Melvin, though, he says if he had some money, he would buy a horse. I wouldn't. Do you have any idea what a horse eats? I don't. And frankly, I repeat, I emphasize, this whole Melvin thing has given me serious bags under my eyes. You would think I have amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith, we're very happy you were able to join us. As our staff has informed you, the subcommittee is only interested in the Therefore, there are no right or wrong answers. Do you understand that, Mr. Smith? I got Spider-Man. Mr. Smith, we didn't hear that. You'll have to speak up a bit. I got Spider-Man. I'm Lucian P. Smith, and I mean business. They know Lucian. They know. A Spider-Man type. That's very nice. I'm Lucian P. Smith, and I mean business. Mr. Smith, um, I'll tell you what. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where you live? Your home? Could you do that for us, Mr. Smith? A, B, C, D, L. Go, go on, Lucian. Tell them about home. About Arnold and Norman and Barry. Tell them what it's like. OK. Norman, he be the donut man. Donut? Why do you call him that? He be fat with donuts. <laughs> Arnold, he's got the rugs. He's like nuts or something. He be my friend too. And Barry, he golfs. He be gone now. I miss Barry. I do. I, I miss Barry. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I stand before you, a middle-aged man in an uncomfortable suit, a man whose rational capacity ranges from a five-year-old to an oyster. I am retarded. I am damaged. I am sick inside from so many years of utter and profound confusion. I am mystified by faucets and radios and elevators and newspapers and popular songs. I can't always remember the names of my parents, but I will not disappear. And I will not wither because the cage is too small. I am Lucian Percival Smith, and without me, Without my shattered, crippled mind, you will never again be reminded of what I would have become or what your future might hold for you. Mr. Smith, just one other question. Do you feel you could work outside the sheltered workplace at the center? 
Lucian P. Smith says it's hard. Thank you. Ooh. I got this library card. It says my name. Ify Green. I mean business. <laughs> Go ahead, open it. 
Oh, Norman, I feel all jumpy. Can I have the bowls? No. <laughs> I know what's in it. Let me guess. A frog? A frog would be pretty hard to wrap. <laughs> You're funny, Norman. I am? Oh, boy. Sorry. It's wrong. You are. You're funny. It's wrong. Keys. Oh, Norman, keys. You got me keys. Oh, Norman. <laughs> nice, huh? <laughs> Try them on. Norman, this is the best present I ever got. Go on. Put them on your belt loop. Which side? Whatever side that makes you feel more balanced. <laughs> See the metal ring? Jack gave it to me. It's made out of metal. And Arnold, he got me those keys. He said the movie theater has a bunch of keys that nobody uses, so he gave them to me. And then that little one right there, that's Lucian's. It's through his diary, but he can't write, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> They're the most beautiful keys I ever saw. They better be. They're from the movies. <laughs> oh boy, that was fast. I gotta go, Norman. Seven and nine are too close together. <laughs> gotta go. A bullet can tell by the time. I gotta go, I gotta go for the bus at nine. Would you like a donut? I gotta go. <coughs> Hello, my name is Norman Polanski. <laughs> Welcome to my home. Thanks for visiting with me. Sorry about your flowers. Come again. This is the most best, beautiful present I ever got. <laughs> Arnold is Arnold, and 
Norman is Norman, and Lucian is Lucian, and keys are keys, and donuts are donuts. So I, I thought I'd just drop by and say hello. I, I better get going. I'll take any wood there. The worst thing you do is look around. Everywhere you look, there are any donuts. Oh boy, they call it a party. Lucy, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know, stop spraying that. We're all gonna catch asthma and die. I'd be making a smell clean. Lucy, this is furniture polish. <laughs> if you have a fresh in the air, this is your polishing furniture. Put it away. My nose smells like a burrow. You be having furniture, Arnold. Norman, what are you doing? I thought you said you were gonna get snacks. All I see are donuts. Donuts are snacks. Donuts are not snacks. Donuts are snacks. Donuts are not snacks. Donuts are snacks. Donuts are not snacks. I hear the light. I hear them. Quick, turn off the lights, Lucian. Oh boy. The light, Lucian, the light. Hello? My name is Norman. But... <laughs> <laughs> come in. It's open. Please come in. You make a plan, you work it all out, you turn out the lights. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. I could get a china just standing here. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Lucian. I got these for you from the Giddy Gas place, Norman. They're pretty. Oh, boy, I hope I don't sit on them. <laughs> Put them up high. You can't sit on things up high. I might as well ask a pretty frank question now. But, uh, Sheila, can I have your keys? Oh, boy, keys. Her keys, her keys, keys she needs her keys. keys. Oh, boy, what's wrong keys. with you? I can see you're not ready to make up your mind now. <laughs> Good, I'll uh, bring it up later. Mm, I'll take these. Don't worry, they'll go bad. They won't go bad. Who should Want to see our bathroom? We got a nice bathroom. I like this here has to do more than talk, talk, talk. How come you got that hat on, Arnold? This is my own personal hat, which I bought from a bald man in a store, thank you. I will be right back with a plan. Oh boy, I think she's so smart. Mary, my friend is all bald. When she takes off her hat, she looks like out of space. Do flowers stay bald? She has no eyebrows, it's weird. No eyebrows. What does she do on a rainy day? When I went to the store to get the supplies for this stuff, I didn't tell the lady it was for a, for a party with full-grown adults with their own home. I didn't want to be a braggart. What's in the bag, Arnold? <laughs> animal puppets. A whole bag of animal puppets. How come? Because with animal puppets, you are now three guests at a party instead of just one. These ain't people. These are puppets. I hear them. I hear Jack. Did, did she know the song? No, we didn't have time. I could have expected this. Here, just put them on and mouth the words. <laughs> I got the flowers in the tub. Put these on. <laughs> I got away. Do you have a bear? I want a bear. I'd like a frog, please. Everybody, please just get familiar with the puppets. Please. Stop! Bang! 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 Stop that! Lucy, stop that! Can I have a bear, please? You want a frog? This is an angina party! That's what this is! This is an angina party! Oh! Uh, quick, turn out the lights! Hello! My name is Norman Bernard! <laughs>
Weren't you surprised, Jack? Be frank. Would you like a donut, please? Here, Jack. Put an animal puppy on. Pow, stop, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> stop that. Guys, what is this party for? You don't know? Boy, this is a surprise. You're leaving us. Harry and the man told us. Right. Well, Jackie leaving us? Where to? Lucian, we've explained this a million times. You should get an atlas. I, I got another job, Lucian. I'm going to be working with the travel agents. Oh, boy. Don't sit up front with the old people. <coughs> we got no trees. So, how many, Jack, how many jobs you got now, Jack? Um, just one. Us, right? Uh, no, Norman, no. I'm going to be working with the travel agents. Jack be leaving us. I'm not leaving you guys. I'll be right around the corner. You, you know that building with the red awning? You can't leave us, Jack. I'm not leaving you guys. I, I'll still be around. It's not like I won't see you guys again. Jack be leaving us. Jack be leaving us. Jack be leaving us. Jack be leaving us. You can't leave us, Jack. Norman, Somebody doesn't know us like you know us, Jack. Norman, you should have thought about this ten years ago. <laughs> Someone will always be here for you, Norman. Somebody doesn't know us like you know us, Jack. Th they'll know you eventually. You can't leave us, Jack. Norman, just listen for a second. If you leave, I'm going to hunger strike. <laughs> I would, Jack, and I mean this. Quit you. I'm not quitting you guys. I'll never quit you guys. It's. I just won't be around. Not for long. You know what, Jack? Net to you leaving us. Net to that. Net, net, net. Come on. I'm serious. I won't eat nothing. I'm going to hunger strike and I won't eat nothing until I look like a worm. Yeah, we got me. no tree. Net. Oh, boy. It's so loud out here. I need sunglasses. Norman, just listen for a second. <laughs> We got no tree! No shit! Yes! <laughs> this is nice. It's cozy. <laughs> Can we get something? 
something to eat. <laughs> I'm very undernourished tonight. Sure, we'll stop by some more. As long as it's not a la carte. I don't like a la carte. No a la carte. Got it. So, you're going to be a travel agent come now, huh, Jack? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Jack? Yeah? I mean this. You have a lot of better behavior patterns than a lot of I repeat 